Hi, my wonderful TM joiners. I'm Priya Mistri, the TMJ Doc. And today's topic of discussion is about the many different types of appliances us dentists make, how they are different, what their specific functions are, and most importantly, why they are not interchangeable. Make sure you watch until the end because there's a lot of information here and there's a lot of confusion about the difference between bleaching trays, also called whitening trays, retainers, night guards, and TMJ orthotics. I'll be going over all four of those and even showing some examples, whether it's images or examples that I have to hold in my hands and show you guys. Also, be sure to stay tuned for my new segment, Highlighting a TM Joiner. This is where I take one of your comments and I talk a little bit about it at the end of my videos. So feel free to leave a comment so that you might be chosen for a future video. Before getting into it, be sure to check out my office website and my other social media accounts. I have TikTok, Instagram, tons of information on both of those. And I have noticed that while a lot of you are watching, not all of you are subscribing. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and the little bell notification next to it. The reason is it's not for me, <laughs> it's for you guys and for people that are in pain from TMJ issues. The more people subscribe, the more people that hit that bell notification, the more these videos get pushed out into the interwebs so people can find them and find more information and get help and have less pain and less dysfunction in their head, neck, and jaw. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a general dentist with a practice in Vancouver, Washington. That is close to Portland, Oregon, in case you are wondering. At my practice, we are dedicated solely to taking care of those with TMJ disorders. So now let's get right into it. The four types of appliances I'll be talking about in this video are bleaching trays, retainers, night guards, and TMJ orthotics. So what are bleaching trays? Well, my friends, they're also called whitening trays. And many of us dentists will make these for our patients so that they can whiten their teeth at home. The first step for making these appliances is to actually take impressions or scans with an intraoral scanner of the teeth. We then use the models of the teeth to fabricate whitening trays that sort of look like what's displayed on the image here. These whitening trays are made out of a material that is not as rigid as the material used for retainers or for TMJ orthotics. It is made of a softer and bendier, I know that's not a word, a softer and bendier material. We ask our patients to load up these trays about a quarter of the way up from the biting edges of the teeth and then place these trays gently in the mouth. These upper and lower bleaching trays fit well against the upper and lower teeth and they are also built with some pockets of space in them. They're sort of like air pockets towards the biting edges of the teeth, so away from the gums of the teeth. This is to allow the whitening or bleaching agent to really just contact mostly the teeth and not the gums. We don't want to bleach the gums. That would look weird. So that in a nutshell is the bleaching or the whitening tray. Keep in mind that all of these appliances I'm talking about in this video are made from molds or scans of the teeth. So because they're made sort of similarly and they use somewhat similar materials to be made from, there can be a lot of confusion as to what is the exact difference behind all of these appliances. So keep in mind that once the impressions or the scans are taken, there's often a lot of lab work going on in the background that you guys never see that makes each appliance very different. While one is a bleaching tray, another is the retainer, another is a night guard and another is a TMJ orthotic. Again, very different. So let's move on to retainers. How are retainers different from bleaching trays? Well, my friends, they are quite different. They might look similar because some retainers can be clear and they can look like a bleaching tray, but they are quite different. They still fit well over the teeth, but there's no pockets of space to allow for whitening agent to be put in there and they fit pretty rigidly against the teeth. The primary function of a retainer is to hold the teeth in place. It is not to allow room for the whitening agent, like a bleaching tray. If the retainer is in fact clear, it often looks like this. This is an Essex retainer. Another popular type of retainer is called the Holly retainer, and it has pink acrylic and metal wires to hold the teeth in place. 
To be clear, even though retainers are made from impressions or scans of the teeth and kind of look like bleaching trays, they are very different. They are made of a material that is more rigid and they fit very precisely to the teeth, holding them in place. A little side note here, both bleaching trays and retainers cannot be used as night guards. Many people will say, well, I just use my bleaching tray as a night guard, or I just use my retainer as a night guard. It is not a night guard. Bleaching trays and retainers are not thick enough to absorb the colossal forces of clenching and grinding activity. For more information on the forces involved with clenching and grinding activity, take a look at my video called Chewing Forces versus Clenching and Grinding Forces. I've linked that above and below. On to night guards. A dental night guard typically looks like this image shown here. It's typically clear and it fits on all the upper teeth or on all the lower teeth. There's no great advantage to having one that fits on the upper versus one that fits on the lower. The primary function of a night guard is to protect the teeth from the forces of clenching and grinding. So therefore, a night guard does have value because it prevents your teeth from fracturing. It keeps your teeth from breaking. Having said that, a night guard is not appropriate for treating TMJ issues, particularly if these issues are in the moderate to severe category. Keep in mind that night guards are also made in a similar way to bleaching trays and retainers in that impressions or scans are taken of the teeth but there's a totally different design in how they're made and a totally different purpose in how they work and how they function. Another type of night guard looks like this. This is called the NTITSS night guard. NTITSS stands for nociceptive trigeminal inhibition tension suppression system. So that's a lot of big words. What the heck does that mean? Basically this type of night guard uses your own pain receptors to help you stop or limit clenching activity. So the way that this is designed is that with an NTI-TSS type of night guard, there's a little piece in the front that actually, when worn, it separates your back teeth. That piece in the front is what you actually clench against it. And when you clench against it or you clench hard enough, those teeth that are clenching against that small piece in the front, their pain receptors sort of go off. And that will sort of signal to your body, to your mind, to stop clenching or limit that clenching activity. So the NTI's primary functions are to stop or limit clenching activity and to protect the teeth from the forces of clenching and grinding activity. Some dentists will argue that an NTI type night guard that little piece in the front, if worn for too long, can actually make the back teeth start to erupt so that they meet each other. So it can actually cause an anterior open bite, an open bite in the front where the front teeth are no longer touching. So there's arguments for and against that. I actually don't make this type at all, so I don't really have practical experience or clinical experience to tell you about that. I will say that I don't think the clear night guard or the NTI type night guard is appropriate for treating TMJ disorders particularly if they're in that moderate to severe category. And this is simply because they do not treat the muscles and the joints the same way that TMJ orthotics do. So now let's get into TMJ orthotics. When I fabricate TMJ orthotics for my patients, what I do for them is I find where their muscles are the most relaxed. This is called their correct resting length. And then I build a TMJ orthotic that literally holds the muscles in their most relaxed position. When these muscles are held in their relaxed position for a significant amount of time, good things tend to happen. And we typically see pain go down pretty drastically within a month, month and a half. This includes headaches, neck pain, jaw pain, ear pain, pain behind the eye, facial pain, and more. Now, if catching or locking of the jaw is one of the primary concerns, the orthotics are made a little bit differently. The relaxed position of the muscles, of course, is still taken into consideration. And additionally, we're taking the alignment of the joints into consideration to allow the disc that's out of alignment, causing the clicking, popping, catching, locking, to get back in alignment, to bring down that dysfunction in the jaw joints. An important thing to keep in mind here is that the first step 
to making every single appliance I've talked about in this video, whether it's bleaching trays, retainers, night guards, or TMJ orthotics. The first step starts with impressions or scans of the teeth. Now for the fabrication of the TMJ orthotics, there is a very valuable second step, and that is recording where the muscles are the most relaxed. A CBCT, cone beam computed tomography, is also taken at my office. With this CBCT scan, I can see the bony condition of the jaw joints, and I use what I see in that scan to help me firm up the diagnosis and fabricate the TMJ orthotics. So with TMJ orthotics, taking the impressions or scans, finding where the muscles are most relaxed, looking at the alignment of the jaw joints and making sure that they're decompressed and in a good alignment according to the person's actual TMJ condition, all of these things are taken into consideration when designing the perfect TMJ orthotic for each patient. Each patient has their own unique individual prescription built into the TMJ orthotics that I fabricate. Now, are all TMJ orthotics made like this? Probably not, and that's the tricky part. All TMJ orthotics are not created equal, but that is for another video. <laughs> so we'll kind of put that on the back burner for the moment. Now let's take a look at the appliances that I make most frequently. This one is called Amora mandibular orthopedic repositioning appliance. This fits on the lower teeth and it has indentations all the way across that when made specifically for you, those indentations are for the cusps of your upper teeth and they fit precisely into those indentations, putting the jaw in a very specific position. So upper teeth fit into the indentations, putting the jaw in the position that we measured, where the muscles are most relaxed and the joints are decompressed. I'm not sure how well you can see the indentations here, but they are built into there, and those indentations is what makes this so drastically different from a night guard. This has a prescription built into it. So my mentor would always say that a typical night guard is sort of like reading glasses. You can go into any store and buy reading glasses, while a TMJ orthotic is like prescription glasses. It has a unique prescription that is built into it. So this mandibular orthopedic repositioning appliance, Mora, when worn, literally holds the jaw in a different position than where it's dictated and held by the teeth coming together. Again, the prescription that's built into this appliance is unique to each individual and it takes a skilled and experienced TMJ practitioner to find that prescription. Now let's take a look at the other type of appliance I use a lot. This is called the ARA, Anterior Repositioning Appliance, also called the Ferrar Appliance, after a Dr. Ferrar who came up with this. So basically, this is what it looks like. This one is different because it fits on the upper teeth and it has this flange that comes down. So when worn, the bottom teeth here fit in front of that flange, like so, thereby kind of holding or guiding the jaw forward. So even if the jaw tries to drift backwards during sleep, it has a flange here that's sort of preventing it from doing so. This ARA also has indentations all the way around with the specific prescription built into it. So these indentations guide the lower teeth where to rest, putting the jaw in a very specific three-dimensional position that's good for the muscles and the joints. I often use this ARA appliance for patients who are experiencing more advanced TMJ conditions or locking or catching of the jaw joints. So to recap, a bleaching tray is just that. It's a bleaching tray. It cannot be used as a retainer, as a night guard, or as a TMJ orthotic. A retainer is used to hold the teeth in place and cannot be used as a bleaching tray, a night guard, or a TMJ orthotic. A night guard is used to protect the teeth from the forces of clenching and grinding, which can be colossal. A night guard can be used as a retainer if it's made to fit against all the upper teeth or all the lower teeth. So if it's made from the impressions or scans of your teeth, so not an over-the-counter night guard, but a custom-made night guard made by your dentist from 
molds or scans of your teeth can be used as a retainer if it covers all the upper teeth or if it covers all the lower teeth. So for example, if it covers all the lower teeth, it will also serve as a retainer for only those lower teeth, not for the upper teeth. I hope that's clear. An NTI type night guard typically cannot serve as a retainer. The function of a TMJ orthotic is that it treats the muscles and the joints if you're experiencing TMJ issues. A TMJ orthotic can also serve as a retainer on the teeth that it fits against. So the mora, for example, fits on the lower arch, it'll hold the lower teeth in place if it covers all of those, which mine always do. An ARA will serve as a retainer for the upper teeth because it covers all the upper teeth. One important thing to keep in mind is that in dental school, most of us dentists are not trained in how to make TMJ orthotics. I learned what I know 11 years after practicing general dentistry. That was in 2018 when I met my mentor who basically taught me all of this. I do know that making TMJ orthotics requires training, skill, and experience. So I hope the information in this video helped to clarify the differences between all the appliances you may have seen or heard about. And remember, just because impressions and scans of the teeth are the first step in making many of these appliances, and because they may look similar and fit over the teeth, that does not mean that all these appliances are the same or that they have the same function or work the same way. There is a lot of important lab work that often happens behind the scenes and additional records that are taken that really make it so that these appliances are drastically different from one another. So again, I hope you found this information helpful and let's move on to my fun segment called Highlighting a TM Joiner. Today we'll highlight a comment from Kitsi and please forgive me if I am butchering that name. Kitsi said, and I quote, Thank you, it felt like it was melting all the tension and tightness away on my lower jaw. My jaw has been so tight and felt like it was going to lock up. Finally, relief, exclamation point. Kitsi left this comment on my video called releasing the masseter. So that is a self massage that really helps loosen up the tight bands of tissue and trigger points that can sort of form in these big masseter muscles, which are essential for chewing and used a lot with clenching and grinding activity as well. So loosening up those muscles can go a long way in terms of loosening up the head, neck, and jaw actually. So I'm glad that you found relief, Kitsi. I hope that you guys take a look at that video. I've linked it above and below, and that's really it. Again, I'm Dr. Priya Mystery, and I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please feel free to like, subscribe, and share with your family and friends. Remember that questions and comments are always welcome. Be sure to comment or ask a question because you might be featured in my next Highlighting a TM Joiner segment. And remember, my friends, you can never have TMI about TMJ. Thank you.